So to start off, when you're making the Kumiko design, the first thing you need to do is cut six pieces to the correct height. Um, and I've cut them all equally to the same length. And I've just used a stop lock on my cross cut sled to, to do that. Um, the next thing is to determine the thickness of this piece. So if I just bring my electric caliper here, you can see this piece is 13 13 mil. So half a 13 mil is going to be six and a half. So six and a half is the depth of the blade I need. So again, just grabbing this, setting this in at six and a half. So I'm happy with that. So that's set now. And the next thing is to do is collectively all together, I need to make the cuts equally across all six pieces. Um, but I need to determine how far I want to go. So the first cut is going to be just a small groove, just to give me enough play for the edges, and they will be trimmed down later on. So in order to get that stop block in place, I'm just going to use a clamp and a block to allow me to do that. So I'm just going to clamp this in place. And this doesn't have to be exact, um, because again, this will be finalized later on. But just to clamp that in place to get the first set of grooves in place and the reason I'm doing them all together is so that they're all equal cuts and then when I do cross cut them but join the design together they will fit nicely like a puzzle probably wondering why I'm moving the pieces one mil every single time I make a cut. It's just because the thickness of the piece isn't the same as my blade. Um, if, I, if I was to do this again, I need to make sure the thickness of each strip is the same thickness as the blade, and that way you won't have to make these minor adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and assemble these and see how it comes along. So I have all the pieces that I've cut on the table saw and now I'm just going to quickly try and assemble without any glue and see how, how the joints have come. Um, so they should all cross lap initially. I may need to use a bit of the hammer to, to get them going um, because they are nice tight fits and you want a tight fit otherwise um, you just have loads of pieces moving around for no reason. So that's what it looks like so far. So what we can do is in theory, we can just grab a pencil and mark off the bits that we don't want. So just to measure up if this is, um, 
show an excess of one and a half centimeters and that should be the same as well one and a half we can just mark out one and a half in here and um, we can just reduce that down so off camera what I've done I've just trimmed the edges so they're nice and even um, there was some excess amount for these this much so I've just got rid of those um, the next stage is to then now determine the length for the diagonal piece and if I was to do it accurately, that would be 7.8. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut them at eight and a half, just to give me enough play. Um, I'll cut one first and give it a shot and then see how the rest of the pieces go. So off camera, I've just cut this piece um, as a test piece to just see how it'll fit going across. And like I said, I cut it slightly bigger. So once I cut the angles using this jig, um, I can then determine the full length of it and once I've done one I'll do the other three as well so off camera what I've done I've redone the hole for the jig um, and, and screwed that down so what I've done initially is I've just kind of given it a slight overhang on the, on the jig just to get it going I don't want to remove too much because I don't want it to be too short so to adjust this you just got to open a screw and bring back the stop block as much as you want so I'm going to just go with that for now um, and then tighten this down so it clamps in place and this won't move anywhere and you can have consistent cuts if I just show you on the camera you can see that it's just slightly over the actual edge it's just proud a little bit the reason being is we want to take small passes at a go and how this jig works is once you set the stop block you need to have a nice sharp chisel and we're going to use this angle to pair away uh, keeping the, the chisel flat edge against this flat side at all times um, and making sure that we get nice consistent cuts so you want to move the piece consistently all the way across to the back um, and then slowly just pair away so I'm just going to work my way through it be careful with your fingers because you, you want your chisel nice and sharp otherwise it's just not going to really work. I just keep testing to see if it's going to fit we've still got quite a bit to go so yeah we're going to adjust again and continue going So one side will pair a lot faster than the other. Um, it just comes with practice. I'm not perfect at this, so um, yeah, it just comes with practice. So I think a little bit more and we're almost there. Let's try that one. a little bit more remember you want to take small passes as you go you don't want to do too much and then you can't undo it you'd have to start all the way from the beginning again which is not an issue because then you'd have to just pull back the stop block a little bit and uh, work your way backwards in a sense but See now I've done the exact same thing so it's a little bit too loose um, 
I had a feeling that was going to happen. So just to show you what I would have to do now is I have to redo this piece. So I'd cut this piece at this rough, this rough length, which is going to be um, just so I don't have to cut too much. So end to end, it's just under eight. Um, like I said, it was going to be 7.9 is exactly. So I've just gone, I'm actually 7.8 at the moment. So I'm one mil too short. So I'm going to cut the lens at eight centimeters and try it again. Um, but I'll do that off camera. So off camera, I've just redone um, what I was doing earlier, but just kept a little bit longer. I've adjusted this now to the exact size I need by just by just reducing it by a couple of mil. Um, and I've, I've gone again and done the angles on both sides. Just give it a good test fit to see how it goes. Um, and yes, nice and tight. And you can see that there are no gaps. So exactly what you want. Um, so he's got there. So there's no gaps either joint, which is nice and tight. So now that we have one done, we have the, the stop block um, fixed in place. So I can go ahead and make the cuts for the other three and um, we'll have all four done together just using this one jig. So off camera, what I've done, I've just done all four pieces um, to give us the crossed. Um, and these are nice and tight without any glue at the moment. Um, and I've just done that very quickly just because my jig is set to a consistent length now. So if I was to make the same ones again, this is already set so I can go ahead and make these cuts without any hassle. But the next thing is, is the next pattern. So you could keep it like that as a simple um, sort of star pattern. But if you want to make it the more of a traditional look, then there needs to be a sort of a, a three way joint in each of these triangles. Um, and to do that, I need to use the other two jigs I've created, which is a 22 and a half degree angle and a 67.5 degree angle. I have posted another video on how I made these. So I'll add that in the link below. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and try and work out how we're going to do these. I'm just going to do a, um, <clears throat> a test run off camera to just see and then I'll explain exactly how I've done this using these jigs. So the next part of, this, of the Kumiko pattern is to fit the three-way lap joints into each of these uh, triangles. Um, and for this time, I'm going to be using a 22 and a half degree angle. And I've just put the jig into my vise just to give me a third hand to make my life a bit more easier. Um, so the first thing I need to do is measure the angle of roughly what I'm going to need. So to be precise, it looks like it's going to be 4.6 centimeters. Um, but I'm going to cut them slightly longer at five just to give me a bit extra. Um, and then what I'll do, once I've made those cuts, I'll need um, quite a few to be honest. But I'm going to go ahead and do do one piece at a go, just to see how they go. And then I'll make all the cuts together. So again, I'm going to cut this piece at five centimeters, and this will give me plenty enough material to, to make the lap joint. It's probably going to be extra, but it's what I need at the moment. So I'm going to do those. Um, and I'm going to need quite a few to go all the way around. But I'm going to just do enough for this square at the moment and then I'll do the rest straight after off camera.
and just work your way towards it don't rush um, and just make sure that we're getting the correct angles so we're slowly getting there you can see there's a slight overlap there if I pick that up it's not 100% accurate it needs a little bit more taken off um, so I'm gonna adjust this so it does take off just a maybe a middle or two a bit more and tie that in place and again work your way back out of this just to get the vinyl And that looks good to me so if I just hold that in place you can see exactly what it would look like so that's nice and tight the gaps are nice and tight as well and the final piece will be going across there but before we do that we just need to take a hairline off this one but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to cut all the other pieces first now that I have this set and then I'll make that little slit over here and then this will be a 45 and that will be a 45 going straight in So off camera what I've done is I've cut all the pieces, um, 16 in total, um, and I've done the angles on both sides. So for this particular side you can see the angle is there at 22 and a half degrees either side. And then on the opposite side it's an angle of 67.5 degrees. And I've done those for all 16 pieces using the, these three jigs. Um, so if I just move these pieces aside for now, um, the next thing to do is just do a dry fit and to see what it looks like. So let's have a look and, and see if they do come out nice and tight or whether they're quite loose. Um, there is one piece missing in this pattern so far and that is going to be the piece that will go across this point here. But in order to make that piece I'm just going to zoom in slightly in order to make that piece across here we need to cut a sort of groove um, and to do that we're going to use the 67.5 degree angle to just give a hairline um, removal from here and there and that will create a point for where this point this piece can join into so this will be a 45 degree angle and that will be a 45 degree angle as well. So in order to make that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make all these little um, trims and all of these pieces and then um, we'll get the final piece fitted in. So the next thing to do is just, now that I've cut these grooves into all these pieces, is to now measure the full length of the piece I need there and I can see that it's going to be three and a half sorry two and a half centimeters long so I'm going to make um, various cuts of these and we're going to make eight in total for each one so I've gone ahead and cut these pieces um, for the third piece to go across here and these all cut out two and a half centimeters so the next stage is to get our 45 degree angle jig back in the clamp um, and we're going to just loosen the, the stop on this and we're going to bring it all the way just to hold that in place until we get this piece in. So loosen this slightly now, bring the, what we want to do is just remove a little bit at a time. So I'm just going to stop that there. And clamp that, screw that back in place so it's nice and tight. 
um, it will just give us repeated beard cuts over and over again. These pieces are a lot smaller, so it will be quite hard to hold, but just take your time. And again, we're going to use the pairing motion to And let's see if this uh, fits in. That fits in nice and tight as well. So you can see there's no gap. So now that's set pretty much perfect, I can just go ahead and do the rest of these pieces and get it all joined up and I'll do that off camera and uh, show you how we get on. So finally we have the um, Kumiko design pattern created using these three jigs which I made by hand. Um, really impressed in how it came through. It looks really good. I just need to undo everything and then apply some glue and it should be as solid as, as it needs to be. Um, if you want to get rid of these edges you can. You can just either sand them down or cut them right to the edge once they've glued. Uh, I quite like the pattern. I might create a, a frame to go around this now to create sort of a, um, a full piece of it. So I hope you liked the video. Um, I'm just gonna off, kind of off video, I'm gonna glue this up and yeah, take some pictures and you can see the final thing. I hope you liked the video. If you do like it, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, any suggestions on how I can improve or do this a lot more efficiently, then feel free to comment below. Thank you.